Welcome to this uh, GitOpsCon session. Uh, I will talk about uh, how at Orange we are managing dynamic 5G core infrastructure with a FluxCD and Terraform controller. I'm David Blazano. I'm a cloud and software expert for network on telco application. I'm deploying mainly 5G networks uh, using GitOps for about two years, and I'm dealing with infrastructure as code for more than five years. So first, before talking about FluxCD, Terraform controller, and 5G, I, I have to give you a little bit of context. Uh, Orange is a telco group that is working in more than 26 countries around Europe and Africa, deploying fixed network and mobile networks to bring communication between everyone and the internet. But what is a mobile network? Just to give you a big picture of what it is, uh, I'll give you some numbers. Orange is dealing with more than 70 millions of mobile subscribers in Europe. Those subscribers are consuming about 800 petabytes of data in Europe per month. And all the subscribers are spread around 40,000 mobile sites in Europe. And the traffic is growing for more than two uh, in three years. So there is huge numbers, uh, huge, uh, a huge data network that, uh, that we have to deal with. So the 5G network, this is uh, the, this new network, this new mobile uh, way of communication is not only a big tube with a big bandwidth you can have access from your mobile phone. Uh, with the 5G standalone architecture, the standalone mobile network, this is one of the specific uh, 5G deployment we can have. We have a better, we have a lower latency, we have a better improvements of the slice capabilities. I will give you just a few words about the slice later. And uh, we have better support of all this new use case about IoT, VR, and ultra reliable communication. And in this use case, I will talk about uh, I will talk about the mobile private 5G network. Uh, this is a separate a separated network deployed only for our business customers. Uh, these those uh, private networks are totally separated from the others. They are uh, they have only um, their own application, their own. 5G function, their own radio, they have everything for them. This is, this is totally separated from the other, other part. They can, this 5G network uh, is um, mainly a big set of many 5G core function in uh, here in, in uh, an AWS EKS cluster. Uh, this EKS cluster is somewhere in an AWS region and it's connected to local breakout. And those local breakouts are mobile are sites, uh, mobile sites in the customer uh, zone. Uh, they have their own routers, their own application and their own radio. Uh, those radio are added to, to, uh, to, to cover their need. And this UPF here, that is a router, is a specific function that allow data to go from specific uh, a specific path to ensure that the production the production need are not the one of the business need and that the production users are using application for their own need and not the one from the business needs. So we have the 5G core function in an EKS region. We have local breakouts with UPF data routers to allow se uh, segregated uh, data access from the radio to the application or to the internet for the specific need depending on the business needs. So we have two, two, two kind of dynamic needs. It's not only 5G core function in the Kubernetes, but we also have to deal with the creation of a new slice. This new slice is a new segmented network. It's, uh, it's clearly a new deployment inside the deployment, a new function deployments inside that. Think about, um, let's say, uh, 
it's not a virtual house in an Apache. It's another Apache, for example. So here, it's clearly a new deployment of new application in a new path to ensure that we have a specific and a, and a specific and a secure uh, router for a specific need. So we have to create a new network. We have to create a new infrastructure and to deploy a DCI application inside this network and infrastructure. We also have to deal with new radio when a customer wants to enlarge its coverage, its 5G coverage, he has to plug new radio in his site. So we have to securely connect it to connect this equipment to the 5G core network. So we have to GitHubify not only uh, Kubernetes, but also all the infrastructure around Kubernetes, around our uh, around our 5G core. So to do that, we are using Flux CD Terraform controller. The Terraform controller is a new controller of Flux, like the notification, like the customization or the Helm one. Uh, it's a controller that will use uh, Terraform resources in a GitOps way. It will uh, read Terraform custom definitions and create new runners specific runners to run the Terraform uh, definitions like we have and that we have in a Git, uh, in a Git repo. This Terraform contro controller is multi-tenancy. It clearly allows us to have a GitOps automation for Terraform. It, we ensure that what the, the, the intent we have in a Git is uh, the, what will be deployed in the reality in the infrastructure. Uh, we also have drift detection, plan and manual approval, a GitHub dependencies between Terraform to ensure that some uh, done some Terraform definition are run before the others. And we have the variable passing between a Flux CD object like customization or Terraform using secrets and config maps. And the last one is clearly one of the key elements we are using to deploy or to use case. So to give you an example of what is a Terraform custom uh, resource uh, here is a terraform that i extracted from our, our git uh, for example for this new slice we have a auto approval uh, to ensure that what we deploy on the git is what is deployed in reality so it's auto approval everything is tested everything is okay it's auto approval um, the other one is that we want to destroy the resource on deletion. When we delete the intent in the Git, it has to be deleted also in, uh, in the reality, on, in the infrastructure. Uh, we, of course, are using a new service accounts. This service account is based on the AWS uh, policy and role link. Uh, so uh, we restrict everything we can just to access that the Terraform can access just what we want on the on the infrastructure on our AWS deployments. Uh, we are using three main other elements. The depends on the depends on allow us to execute this Terraform module after another one. Here we want to deploy this network information after the zone uh, the zone one. So the those two Terraform resources will be deployed one after the other. And the two other elements are the, manage the management of variable, the passing of the variables from one Terraform to the other or to customization. Uh, here we are reading for three config, two config map and a secret. From main, uh, we have config map, for example, for the cluster variables. It's a config map that is uh, describing what is, what is the cluster. Uh, another one to describe what is this slice and the last one to get variables from what was deployed before and the last one uh, we have we have to get information from this script this script is not only deploying uh, infrastructures it's also have to to share what has been created the id of the resource created or some specific network configuration so we have to write the outputs of those Terraform uh, templates to these two uh, secrets to be shared to other Terraform or customized uh, resources. 
So the first use case, um, we have to connect a new radio site. Our customer, business customer want to, to enlarge his coverage in his, uh, in his site. So he plug a new radio antenna. He plug it and we have to, to create a VPN between this antenna and the core and, and the UPF. So this we have first to create an AWS VPN gateway. This is done once because it will be used for all, all the other uh, clients. So at the creation of the cluster, we create an intent to say we want a VPN gateway. So it will run a Terraform script and this Terraform script will uh, create a secret with, that is containing just the ID of the, the, the virtual the, the VPN gateway that was created. And when we, when we create a new site, a new radio site, we plug the new one, we create a new intent, an infra site one here, for example, with its config map saying that it has a specific configuration and what we have to create, and then the, the name or something, or the, the network information. This customization will create a new Terraform resource that will read variables from the secret, the, the previous secret and the config map we've just created. The, those uh, variables are inputs for the Terraform scripts and it will um, be pushed to the Terraform to create this last VPN, this last uh, VPN client gateway and site to seed connection and all the related routes and ACL we have with that. And it creates the last secret for, to, to that all of us to update our network functions because we have to connect this radio antenna to a uh, UPF to the router. We have to get information from that antenna to ensure that the network connected to the VPN, to the, the UPF is the correct one. The other use case is the deployment of a new slice. As I said, the new slice is a separated way as a separated place in our in our network. We create a slice of a network for a specific need, for a security reason, for a specific quality uh, configuration. So this slice needs to be created. And in our, in our deployments, it's mainly the creation of a new data router of a new UPF. So this UPF uh, must uh, rely on specific configuration. We must create a new network and security rules to have a specific pass for the data. We have to create a specific VM attached to the main clusters on the new network. It will be a new tainted node in the main cluster, but it is a specific node that will host only this UPF for security reason and traffic and data security on, on this UPF. And we also have to get the lower level network information on this node because this UPF, this router, has a specific configuration. It needs to, to manage huge bandwidth, for example. So it has to be uh, connected to the lower level interface and we have to get the PCI addresses, for example, on the network cards on what we have just deployed. So for that, we just create a new intent, a new definition of a slice. It's a customization and, and a config map. Those two, uh, intents are put in a git and then we create two new customization. Uh, this, those two customization are uh, the definition of a slice infrastructure and then the slice application. I will not detail the slice application. I will just focus on the slice infrastructure. This slice infrastructure create three, three elements. We say that we have to create a new dedicated network and security rules. Uh, it read the, the, the variables from the config map, the slice definition, and the cluster vars, and it creates the output to get all the network information in the secret. This secret is also read by the, the, left, the next Terraform uh, definition to create this new EC2 instance and this new, um, this new zone attached, this new tainted node attached to the main cluster. It creates also a secret that is passed to the last to the last Terraform definition. This one is quite specific because it's just a Terraform script that have to connect to the EC2 instance to be run inside it and to get the PCI addresses of this um, 
of this new node. So this is a Terraform definition with affinity uh, config configuration that enforce the, the, the run of the, 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 this Terraform runner inside this new Tintin node. And the, of course, like the other Terraform script, it creates a secret where it stores the PCI addresses uh, of this new Tintin node. That's because the application we are deploying in the in the last customization, the deployment, the UPF or, or big router, uh, need to get uh, the multi configuration on the PCI addresses to ensure that he is connected to the lower level to enhance the UPF performances. So last last thing, a few feedbacks about what we have, uh, what we are using and the GitOpsify, the way of improve, of uh, deploying our, our infrastructure with Fluxid Terraform controller. Yes, it's a good idea for us. Clearly, we are just uh, managing infra resources uh, in, in intents, like intents, like any other GitHub subject. We have continuous reconciliation, notification. We can um, have a, everything is pulled automatically. When we destroy, it's also destroying the infrastructure. Uh, we have a dependency between customization and Terraform that are easy to manage. It's easy to to deploy application or to ensure to have everything to done to everything done in the in a Kubernetes way. And all the variables can be natively passed through Kubernetes config map or secrets between Terraforms and customization. It's a little clearly an easy way of have a custom template. A customized template with the possible uh, sub substitution from Flux CD. It's a huge function that allows us to have only template definition of what we deploy and then just get the variables from the local config map and secret that to ensure that what we deploy it's in the same way in all the cases but just with variables. Clearly our decision to use also uh, Flux CD Terraform controller is because we already had those uh, Terraform so definition. Uh, it was previously run in the Git in a GitLab CI. It was run once, once, and then it was uh, everyone say it's okay, it's done. But now it's just we just take the, the same definition and put them in the um, in the GitLab in the in the Git in and deploy in a GitLab way. But we just modify something in, in those definition. Viable, variables must be serialized. Uh, we cannot uh, inject variables, complex variables like JSON in the Terraform uh, without serialize them. We have to serialize and manage everything like a string uh, if we want to use complex variables. The last element uh, that we have to to be careful is the deletion process is a little bit trickier than the deployment. Of course, with all the infrastructure, it's it's the same thing. Uh, don't cut the branch you're on. Uh, I said we are using node affinity to get information from a node. We also have to ensure that all the other nodes are not running uh, on this node. And when we did de de remove an uh, we remove a resource. The, the runner is not inside this resource when, the, when, the, when we delete it. So we just have to take care about this not affinity. And when we remove uh, an, a, an intent, we have to remove the variables, the variables config map or secret after the Terraform intent. Because when the Terraform runner uh, is uh, starting, it uh, just need to access these variables. So just take care about that. And the last one is not only it's not the only alternative to 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 manage the infrastructure. We can also have uh, cross plane, for example. But here we just need to reuse our Terraform in a GitOps way. So it's just the reusing of the, of all scripts. I hope this talk uh, gives you some information and some good feedback, and that you can bring to to your own need. So uh, I, I wish you a good day.